Hey everybody, Zian over here from Nintendo Life. Now with Neo, the world ends with you on the horizon, coming to the Nintendo Switch very soon, we thought it'd be timely to release a video adaptation of our review that we wrote a while back of the world ends with you final remix for Nintendo Switch. Now this review was originally written by Mitch Vogel for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. Nintendo certainly transformed the gaming landscape when it launched the Nintendo DS line of systems, offering up a distinct two-screen experience that had seldom been attempted before in hardware. Though there were plenty of first-party releases through the years that did a great job of showing off the dual-screen concept, Square Enix arguably produced one of the best examples of the concepts done right when it put out The World Ends With You in 2007. Featuring a chaotic and unique combat system that spanned both screens and employed touch controls, The World Ends With You quickly became a cult hit among RPG fans, later receiving a single screen release on mobile devices, then an ultimate version came to Switch as The World Ends With You Final Remix. While this port notably stumbles in how it implements its control scheme, it does a great job of recapturing all the magic and fun of the original release. The story centers around Neku, an angsty, headphone-clad teen with a serious aversion to any form of social interaction. One day, Neku wakes up in the middle of a crowded Shibuya street with no memory of how he got there, and the dozens of people milling about are seemingly incapable of perceiving him. After forging a pact with a mysterious teen girl known as Shiki, and fighting off an attack by a strange group of monsters called Noise, Neku learns that he's been entered into some sort of paranormal competition called the Reaper's Game. From this point on, each day becomes a desperate struggle for survival as alliances are made and broken in a dynamically shifting environment that constantly pushes the player to their limits. Characters are well developed over the game's story, each one dealing with a personal vice or struggle that's suitably challenged as they battle for survival. In Neku's case, this takes the form of him being forced to learn how to work with others and be more trusting, as cooperation is vital to reaching the end of the Reaper's game. There are some real stakes to the narrative that caught us off guard multiple times throughout the game. By the end of the 15 hour campaign, you'll have developed a deep emotional connection to this memorable cast and world. Combat has been radically changed since the DS original, with the unique battle system having to be tweaked and retooled in the transition to one screen. You command Neku with a combination of taps and swipes, with his movements and attacks all being instigated by different inputs, a bit like the system used in Okami HD. Each attack and ability is represented as one of six equipable pins, which give him a variety of Psy abilities like energy blasts and fire trails, and each one of these has a different number of uses before entering a cooldown state. This time around, your partner, rather than being an independently controlled character, now functions as another pin, called into battle by an input of their own. As a way of replacing the energy puck that passed between characters in the original, combat is now centered around alternating attacks between your partner and Neku, building up a fusion percentage that lets you unleash a powerful special attack. These are some of the most riveting portions of a typical battle, as each fusion attack can be bolstered through playing a rapid fire card memory game, with each successful match adding to the damage multiplier. With all that said, the combat system is mechanically solid and quite fast paced in motion, but it stumbles with the awkward controls. Handheld mode is the most ideal way to go here, as touch inputs are easier to register and more intuitive, although this comes at the cost of having to play on the Switch's small screen, and of course smudging it up with the oils from your skin. Playing in docked mode is manageable, but far from intuitive, as the player uses one Joy-Con in a Wii Remote-like fashion to replicate touch inputs on the big screen. After a few hours, one figures out the rhythm to this motion-orientated gameplay, but it never quite comes together as smoothly as the touch controls. You have to frequently tap a button to recenter the cursor, and pulling off swipe maneuvers can be tricky because you need to excellently time them for when to hold down and release the A button. Regardless of which control type you pick, neither feels like a completely satisfying option, which certainly comes as a disappointment given how the original release partially made its name on the unique control system. 
The kind of equipment you choose prior to battles obviously has a huge effect on one's battle prowess, but The World Ends With You finds an interesting way of integrating this even further into the experience through the fashion system. Shibuya is obviously a very fast-moving, fashionable place, and the effectiveness of the clothes and pins that you wear are directly impacted by these fashion trends. Each area of the map has a chart showing which clothing lines are hot and which ones are not. If you're using pins and wearing equipment that's in fashion, you'll benefit from a variety of stat bonuses, while the opposite is true if you wear something that's not cool. Even so, if there's a particular line that you're adamant on wearing, repeatedly battling in that outfit will set a new trend that boosts the brand's effectiveness in that area. It's a very compelling system and a fun way to reference the culture of Shibuya. And this is only further driven home by the shop system. There's plenty of places to shop in Shibuya and repeated visits and purchases at your favorite spots will see Neku build his relationship with the store's proprietor, resulting in discounts and tips on hidden abilities in each item. The Warlands With You also focuses on quality of life features that help to make the game feel much more manageable to those of all skill types. For example, there are no random enemy encounters. You simply tap a button to show you all available enemies in the area and then pick and choose which ones to fight. You can even chain together multiple fights back to back, creating a tough gauntlet of foes to get through, but with the advantage that reward drops are much more profitable. If this still isn't enough, you can directly adjust the difficulty on the pause screen, and you can level down your character if you want, with higher drop rates and better rewards being given out for each notch you move down on your level gauge. Also, if you happen to have a friend on hand, they can pick up a Joy-Con and take control of your partner directly, with their own unique set of pins. All of this combines to make for an extremely modular experience that can be enjoyed in a variety of ways, something which many RPGs could benefit from. If you're just here for the story and want to get through the game at a brisk pace, it's easy enough to lay off the level gauge and leave the difficulty on easy, but if you want to go deeper, The World Ends With You has plenty of options for pushing your limits and handsomely rewarding you for the effort. As for its presentation, The World Ends With You manages to utterly impress, exuding a kind of offbeat angst that's as memorable as it is hypnotizing. This is a game that's about as stylish as they come. The HDR looks gorgeous regardless of which screen you choose to primarily play on as well, going for a sharp, bold anime art style that feels like a cross between Kingdom Hearts and street art. And fittingly so, considering Tetsuya Nomura is actually one of the producers on this game. The characters, environments, and enemies all have an exaggerated dreamlike quality to them, and bright, vibrant colors abound. All of this is matched by an equally energetic and electric soundtrack consisting of J-pop, rock, and R&B beats, with several voice tracks being dropped in for good measure. It's especially notable, too, how the game slowly rolls out this soundtrack as you progress through the campaign, with new tracks being played in old locales. Suffice to say, The World Ends With You is an audiovisual treat. Even if it doesn't push the Switch's limits too hard, you'd be hard-pressed to find a more stylish game on the system. The question remains, of course, whether this is truly the definitive version of The World Ends With You or not. The New Day scenario included in this version feels like a suitable extension of the original game, but not a monumental one. It's rather like a 3-5 to five hour piece of DLC. Otherwise, the Switch version is differentiated by the incredible HD art, some new pins, and motion controls, although that last element is a little iffy. Indeed, this hardly feels like the definitive version then, although the content on offer does manage to justify the price. Over 10 years later, The World Ends With You has lost none of the fun or style that made the original such a cult classic. Although the controls leave something to be desired, the chaotic battle system, catchy soundtrack, and engaging storyline all combine to make this an unforgettable RPG that hits all the right points. We give this one a high recommendation to anyone that hasn't yet experienced this gem in some shape or form. And if you've experienced the game before, however, we'd advise that you think hard about how badly you want it for your Switch. We here at Nintendo Life give The World Ends With You final remix on the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you'd like to check out our full written review, you can find that along with more news and information on the World Ends With You series and the upcoming Neo World Ends With You over at NintendoLife.com. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm ZM from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time. <laughs>